Good morning to one and all. Today we will see unit 2, perceptrons. In unit 2, the first topic is adaptive printing problem. So as, as you all know, the basics of neural networks, how the network is designed. Now we will see the adaptive printing problem. Let us consider one dynamic system which is having mathematical function that is an unknown function. Now, the set of labeled input output data generated by the system at a discrete time instance at some uniform rate. Let's see the diagram. We have an unknown dynamical system which uses this uh, mathematical function and uh, we are applying m dimensions m different stimuli across the m input nodes across the system and we we get the Decide output DA. Thus, the external behavior of the system is described by the data set T XI DI, where I equal to 1, 2, up to N. Also, the input stimuli XI, which is equal to X1 of I x2 of i, so on x sum of i, then transpose of t. So the input vector which is having m different uh, features, these m different features applied across the m different neurons and we are applying some mathematical function into the dynamical system. At last we will get the desired output. So this is what is the dynamical system. Let's see the input out, input vector xi can be fundamentally in two different ways. One is spatial and another one is temporal. Now, m elements of xi originate at different points in space in this case, we speak of Xi as snapshot of data. If the M elements of Xi represent the set of present value and the M minus 1 past value of some existence that, that are uniformly spaced in M time, then it is called as a temporal. There are two different ways of stimulus. One is a spatial based and another one is a temporal based. The M elements of Xi originate at different point at the space, then it is a spatial. If the M elements of Xi represent the present and past values, then it is based on temporal. Now let's see how to design this. A dynamical system. Yes. So we, if we need to design a multiple input single output model of unknown dynamical system by building around it a single new linear neuron, then the neural model operates under the influence of an algorithm. So while designing this unknown dynamical system with the M input vector and one desired output, then it influences by the, by an algorithm that controls the necessary adjustment to the weight applied of the neuron. Then see what are the uh, uh, main characteristics of algorithm. 
the algorithm starts from an arbitrary setting of neuron synaptic phase. It means that whenever the algorithm starts, the synaptic weight of a neuron, the synaptic weight of the neuron initially any arbitrary value. When, other, when the algorithm starts, the synaptic weights uh, initially some arbitrary value. Then second one is the adjustment of the synaptic weight in response to the statistical variation in the system behavior are made up made on a continuous basis. Here we speak about the time. So the adjustment of the synaptic weight on every neuron made on continuous basis, then computation of adjustment of synaptic weight, computation that is mathematical computation on synaptic weight and that based on that mathematical calculation we need to adjust the weight. Those things are completed inside the time interval. That is one sampling period long. So these three fundamental characteristics on al algorithm decides the neural model. Then the neural model described by above conditions is referred as adaptive filter. Now see the signal flow graph of adaptive filter. So as I said, we have a m different stimuli, external stimuli applied on the m input vector across the system, then we will get the desired output y1. There are two continuous processes in adaptive filters. One is filtering process, another one is adaptive process. In filtering process, as I said, we are applying the m different stimulus on m different neuron across the network and we get the output signal. That is the first one in filtering process. Then also we get some difference in output that is known as a error signal, EI. So in filtering process, again we get two different kind, one is output signal and another one is a error signal. It is a difference of output. Then uh, what about this DI? This is the exact output what we should get, desired output. The difference between YI and the DI is known as a error signal EI. So once we apply the input features to M vector, sorry, M uh, different uh, neurons, and then we are applying the weights across the system on various M neurons, then we will get the desired output, sorry, current output. Already we have a desired output. The difference between the up output obtained and the desired output is known as a error signal. Now see yi which is equal to summation of x equal to 1 or k equal to 1 to m xi wi that is input vector and weight vector. Both we are multiplying up to m times 1 to m times then we will get the desired output. This, this is applicable only to the linear neuron. Then y a in short form we can write it as y a equal to x transpose of y then w i. Already you know x i which is equal to x1, w, x2 up to x m. Likewise, w i which is equal to w1 of i, w2 of i up to w m of i whole transpose. As I said, the error signal e i which is equal to the desired output then minus the current output, what we get. Yes, this is what the filtering process.
in filtering pro process we get one output and the error signal what is the error signal yes it is a difference between the desired output and the current output next adaptive process what is adaptive process yeah you know uh, the difference in current output and desired output is a error signal so based on that error signal we need to adjust the weight okay so the adjustment of weight is known as a adaptive adaptive technique so here the cost function in adaptive filtering algorithm both are applied in adaptive process after finding the error signal how much error possibilities we are getting how much quantity of error we are getting that is adjusted to the various weights after applying the adjustment to the weight again we are calculating the xi into wi to get the output again we are comparing the output with the desired output if it can, if in case of error signal arise again again we need to adjust the weight so this is a continuous process till we get the correct desired output so that adjustment process of weights is known as adaptive process the sim the filtering process is finding the error signal that's all this is what the adaptive filtering problem thank you we'll see in the uh, next class in new topic thank you for